Oh. I'm thankful and grateful for everyone to be here today. I want to open up the floor. Anybody want to greet us? Anybody got a praise report? Anybody have a manifestation report or just somebody just want to say hello? That's fine too. Before I run on into the class today, floor is open for anyone who would like to acknowledge or greet. How's everybody been since the Lions Gate opened? Everybody uh, had a day like I did yesterday, had a bunch planned, and then Lions Gate energy got heavy and, yeah, didn't do anything on the list. Got some stuff done, but didn't do anything on the list. Hey, just stopping in to say hello. Hi, Hi everyone. How you doing, Mark? I'm well. I'm well. How are you? Doing pretty good. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we're going to run on and get started. Uh, we are still uh, in the introduction into Master Itself uh, numerology. Um, uh, I uh, have titled it A Theory of Letters and Numbers. I'm not telling anybody it's the theory. It is a theory, and it's scientific. It's based on science. It's not based on, on hyperbole or emotional rhetoric. This is based on science and everything that I'm going to unveil regarding numerology is something that has been tested and proven by many, many, many folks long before us. Uh, the numerology that I've written, uh, Master Self Numerology, I, I, I call it the soul of numerology or soul core numerology. And the reason um, uh, I call it soul core numerology because I've taken it a step further and a step deeper than any of the information I've ever read or been exposed to uh, about modern numerology. Um, the numbers don't lie. Um, no matter if you're new to numerology or been exposed to numerology, a long way back and have been dealing it dealing with it for a long time the numbers don't lie there there is significant truth in each number significant truth transferred into each letter that comprises of every one of our names that are representative here on the call today. So there is a uh, significant truth in your name. If there is significant truth in letters and significant truth in numbers, and your name is a compilation of letters and numbers, there's significant truth in your name. I want to expose each of us to the power of numerology just so that each one of us on this call and in this class will, will have a tool, even if you don't use it for anything else, you'll be able to use it to unlock the cosmic code in your own name and begin to live the mystical portion of your soul's journey. Until then, and until folks really get uh, aware of, of numerology and how their name breaks down and, and what it does, what it means to, to them as their name, they're just going along through life and yeah, life is happening to them. I wanna teach us how to unlock that cosmic code, and then we can start happening to life. I already happened to life. And I know a few of you on this call happened to life as well. And the furtherance of your knowledge in numerology will give you a firm grip on always staying on that side of the happening. Be the one that is making shit happen instead of it happening to you. So today we left off with uh, gave you guys the um, the uh, key for the letters, and I, I started us out figuring our name, and uh, we will get to that and any other 
uh, numbers that you figured out uh, uh, after the class. In fact, let's do that now. I'm going to open it up. Did anyone start doing their numbers observation and start looking at the numbers that were around them? Did you do your VIN number? Did you do your ID cards? Did you do your address? Did you do any of those things? Anybody do any of those? Hi, it's Jolyn. How are you? Jolyn, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I didn't really study the study the chart thing and didn't do, but I decided to change my my bank information number, like the passwords and all that, because those, when I heard what you said with the two high num 20s, it reminds me what I have already and I'm gonna clear that up <laughs> and I'm gonna just come up with better numbers for that. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, anybody else, anybody do uh, the driver's license? I did. And what, what number came back from your driver's license? Um, in 11-2, which is my heart's desire. Absolutely. And wait, one other thing. It was hilarious because not only does the first letter starts with start with an A, all the rest of my numbers are threes, fives, and sevens. So they're all odd numbers. <laughs> all odd numbers. Yeah. We can't make this up. We cannot make this up. I, I said it uh, a, a thousand times. I'll say it a million times before I check out of here. Your numbers follow you. And you follow your numbers. I told you guys about that card that I got from Social Security Administration years and years and years ago. And it added up to all the numbers across that card, added up to 66. And if you add up Mark Edward Pyle, it adds up to a 66. So that's how I knew eventually everything was going to work out right for me. It took a minute, but eventually it did. Because the numbers never lie. Uh, anybody check out any of their old addresses or old apartment numbers? Anybody anybody live in an in a apartment number nine before? Mm. Humanitarian. How about number five? In and out. Never could get into the rest. Three. Uh, had neighbors upstairs that was always dancing at night or always loud. Or one where where it was solitude and and. It was busy, but it was solitude or seven house where nobody could find you. There's power and significance in all of those numbers. This is what we're going to do for for. Uh, uh, and this is just an ongoing thing. You could do it at your leisure, do it as as you are led to it. But look back, look back on the last three addresses. That you had. The numbers, add them up by themselves, and then the street name. And you have to be very diligent about the street name. You're going to have to Google the street because if it's like, for instance, Boulevard, sometimes they spell it B-L-V-D. Sometimes they spell the whole word out. However, it is in the county or city records that's the number you have to add up. So if it's BLVD 2344, that's easy. But if it's Boulevard, you got to put all of those letters. So the, nu the numbers is the house number. The street name is the street number. So this is, this is it, like I said, it's, it's never an assignment. You can, you know, I'm throwing these out as suggestions. They're really practices. They're really exercises to practice so that you get really good at this, so that it's second nature. You'll be good. You'll know which letters are what value and, and all of this. Um, but do the last three, the last three addresses that you've had. So write out the number and then the street name. And then if it's an apartment after that, then you do that last. So if it's like 1036 South uh, Santa Anita Boulevard, uh, apartment three, then you'll have the 1076 will be one number. South Santa Anita Boulevard will be one number and apartment three will be one number. And you, again, be careful with apartment. Look on your mail or remember the mail. If it had APT, that's what you write. 
If it had a number sign, you put that. If it didn't have anything, it just had two or unit or whatever, you have to go with the official, uh, uh, whatever the official document is, because that's what the cosmos is reacting to, whatever has been officially documented. So when you're doing that for your address, just make sure you get that full legal address. And then I'll, when we come back uh, uh, on Thursday, I'll give you guys all of the significance about uh, the house number, street number, and apartment numbers. Because that's one of the, other than, you know, other than your, your vehicle, uh, that house is, is the most important thing that you're going to have. And you're there more time than you're anywhere else. And, and, you know, your house has a vibration. Anybody ever notice whenever there's a house in your neighborhood that gets abandoned, you know, how, how notice how it just, the whole house just starts to deteriorate. Paint starts chipping windows come up broke uh, roof shingles come off because the house has a vibration and when no one is living in it there's no vibration. You can have folks, you could have two people live next door to each other and the people on on your right move out. And the people on the left that stay, they can do nothing to the house. They don't have to paint it. They don't cut the grass. In. Their house and yard will look better than the house next door that has been abandoned. It doesn't take long for it to, for, because you take the soul, you know, people moving out of the house is just like you losing your soul. If your soul leaves your body, you're dead. You're dead. So there's significance and meanings in that soul connection. Uh, yes, Sharon, your hand is up. That's deep. I've noticed that before. Our neighbors moved and it's like we're already in the woods and it's like the forest just took that area right back. It's so freaky. Like I can't even tell where their house was. Nature just took it back. Absolutely. So yeah, I've seen that. It's uncanny. It, it really is uncanny. It happens uh, uh, on a daily basis. It, it happens. You look at and it's not only just a house, go look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, go downtown in the city that, that you live, especially after uh, COVID and the pandemic, and look at the buildings that folks have moved out of. Look at the businesses that have been shut down for a year. And then look at the ones that haven't. And the only difference is the ones that haven't got people still going in and out. It keeps the vibration going to folks in the buildings that are abandoned and the businesses that get abandoned within 30 days, the property starts to deteriorate because there's no life force in the building. It has its own vibration, but it needs the life force in the building. We provide the life force. The numbers provide our life force. So I want to get into the significance and the meaning of numbers and letters. <clears throat> I break down numbers and letters into four, there's four different characteristics for numbers and letters. And I wanna share them with you guys here today. The uh, first significance and meaning of numbers and letters is the spiritual code that uh, Victorious touched on uh, uh, a minute ago. There is a spiritual code locked in every name, word, letter, and number. There's a spiritual code, a cosmic spiritual code in every name, word, number, and letter. I want to ask, I want to ask everybody on the on the call, what is your thought? What is spiritual? You hear the word spiritual. We throw that word around and you know we have we have uh, folks who go to these buildings every Sunday and every Tuesday or Wednesday and or whatever day they go and they really uh, think that 
that they're spiritual and they had the market cornered on it. But talking with the people that's on this call, I know we're free thinkers uh, on this call. I want, I want somebody to talk to me and tell me, what does spiritual mean to you? The word spiritual. When you hear the word spiritual, what does that mean to you? For me? Absolutely. Um, somebody that's in tune with themselves. Okay. Um, yeah, for me, like when I think spirituality, I think that somebody that has a strong connection with within themselves and with their higher self. Okay, good, good, good. Anybody else? Spiritual, you know, for me, when I, when I, whenever I used to hear the word spiritual, always, it always made me think of something other than on this earth. This, I look at what is in 3D as physical, as a material plane. Spiritual is everything outside of where we are. Everything, everything. Uh, absolutely, soul therapist. Attunement with the source of all. Absolutely, absolutely. So just by knowing that that meaning of spiritual or spirituality or spiritually or however your spirit and all of that, how does it make you feel to know that even if you just now coming to this realization that your name has a spiritual code embedded in it? And how, how many of us wish we would have knew this at eight, nine, 10 years old? I was I was very fortunate. I I was allowed to study and research and and do anything I wanted to at a very young, young age. Uh, it wasn't always like that for everybody else. So how's it make you feel? Uh, go ahead, Victoria. You had your hand up. No, that was an accident. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I mean. I, and even what I knew at the age of eight, nine, 10 years old, it was just on my own adolescent level. It was nothing as profound as what I know now. But even, even the little bit that I did know then was, I was just like, wow, you know? And it gave me meaning. It, it gave a meaning for me to learn how to spell S-P-E-L words properly. It gave meaning to read into, you know, I read the dictionary three summers in a row and I wasn't on punishment. I wasn't grounded or anything like that. It was because of, of this relationship. I've always had a spiritual or otherworldly or outside of earth relationship with numbers, letters, the planets, I just have, and I, I, I recognize it at a very young age. There is a spiritual code embedded in your name. There's a spiritual code embedded in the name of the place you work at. There's a spiritual code embedded in Exxon, embedded in Verizon, embedded in Chase Bank, embedded in, it's a spiritual code embedded in everything that is represented by letters or numbers. It's not just, uh, uh, McDonald's is not just one word thrown together, a few letters thrown together. The spiritual code in every letter. It's something spiritual about every part of McDonald's, every part of Burger King, every part of Target. And we'll, when I get into the part about sigils and, and symbols, uh, we're going to touch on this, but y'all realize uh, uh, Target, think about Target's logo. Yes, Deirdre, you had your hand up. Hi, thank you. Um, the question that you asked about mm -hmm. how does that make me feel or what does it trigger, I'll say, in my mind. Absolutely. Um, really makes me go way out, like uh, as far as aliens and um, where we came from really uh, is like, because it is mathematical. It is 
also scientifical, if that's a word. You just and, hated one. Yes, you did. <laughs> and so it, it, it makes my mind like expand like one of those great big heads because then there's more questions and, um, you know, a need to understand and was, I, I was raised in church from a little girl. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was a musician. I never agreed with, never with that kind of stuff. And when I had a glimpse of astrology and understanding God in a different way that I was taught, I was so happy to let religion go um, so I wouldn't be afraid of the devil. Absolutely. Because I was taught to be afraid of the devil. Absolutely. Then I had another journey and I came back, but I was always told, you ask too many questions. <laughs> and uh, I was told that a lot. And I would think that's stupid not to ask questions. You're, you know, it has to make sense. It does. It, it has to make sense. It, it, it's foolishness. It doesn't make any sense for it not to make sense, for it not, the dots not to connect. So here I am now with you all, and I'm getting another connect, like those that 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 little game connect with. Yep. So no, I don't understand. And it was really um, there's so much, but now where I am now is because I'm quieting myself and listening, is to relax in it because I get, I get when downloads. And when I get them, they're so overwhelming, uh, it blows my mind. So it's, and I think, I do think too much. My mind goes so fast. I think so much that if somebody starts talking to me while I'm thinking, I feel like they completely interrupted a full blown conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I don't, uh, enough of that. I just wanted to share that part. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, it is vitally important that I, I would be remiss if I didn't tell everyone that there are certain numbers that certain numbers mean, mean different things and, and they touch and reach different realms so if you guys have your pencils and papers ready i'll give you all a minute to get a piece of paper and a pencil i am going to break down uh the four planes of the numbers we have physical numbers representing the body. We have mental numbers representing the mind. We have emotional numbers representing the emotions. And we have intuitive or spiritual numbers representing the spirit and inner knowing. So on the physical plane, all fours and fives, if you got fours, if you got a four or five in your name, it is a physical number. Ones and eights are mental numbers. Fours and fives are physical. Ones and eights are mental. Twos, threes, and sixes are emotional numbers. Twos, threes, and sixes are emotional numbers. And sevens and nines are the spiritual or intuitive numbers. So go over that again. Physical numbers are four and five. Mental numbers are one and eight. Two, three, and sixes are emotional numbers. And sevens and nines are spiritual or intuitive numbers. So quick, quickly, you know, look over your name. 
and jot down how many physical numbers you've got, how many mental, how many emotional, and how many intuitive numbers you got. And just keep that for a reference. That's going to be important. Bring that to every one of these calls about numerology. Bring that and the little key, the AJS equals one, BKT two. All just bring that and your uh, 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 the numbers I just uh, uh, gave to you, and and you just just look look through your name and pull out all of the all of those and put them in those categories because we'll you'll 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 understand why that is so important that is so important but yes yeah, so the first significance and the first area of numbers and letters is spiritual the spiritual code second significance is expansion or or opportunities and that deals with your service and your self-realization. <sighs> the way you work, the way that you give, the way that you, that you nurture, the way that you compass, um, it is all built in the numbers and letters in your name. How you are aware of yourself, how you become aware of yourself, how you realize and actualize your being at any given moment is part of the expansion and the expansive quality of letters and numbers already built in your name. You can, you know, most people, uh, uh, we know folks that, that may or may not be aware of numerology, but we know folks that be on these jobs and they just be happy-go-lucky and up and down and smiling and be the first one in and the last one out. And yeah, the numbers uh, that are dealing with their expansion and, 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 and their self-realization and their service, their duty, you know, what, what transcends regular mundane 3D? What expands your soul? What expands your mind? What expands your physical uh, area? What expands your experience? What expands your reality? At any given time is built into to the beauty of each number in and each letter in your name. And each number has its own spiritual code. Each letter has its own spiritual code. Each number has its own expansion key. Number three, the numbers will tell you what your purpose is or your life's work. And I'm, I'm really talking about business success and your personal career. We, how, how many of us was in school and, and it was always a question, what are you going to be when you grow up? What are you going to be when you grow up? What do you want to do when you grow up? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's in your name already. And if you, if I could have gotten someone when I was seven years old, someone like myself to be able to read the soul of numerology and tell me what my purpose in life was at seven, I would have already been here. Your purpose, when, when you know, does it, does, it, does it bug you like it does me sometimes when you know, oh, I'm searching for my purpose. I want to find out what my purpose is. It's in your name. Your life work. It's in your name. You can be unlocked just like that. And I guarantee you, the life work and the purpose that is embedded and encoded in your name, once it's unlocked, it's not work. 
It's not work. I was on the call with with some folks uh, on Sunday, and a uh, person made reference to uh, them taking strategies from corporate world and applying them to their spiritual life and they you know not having the the greatest success and i say well you need to flip that around you need to first of all you need to be who you are spiritually 100 percent, and then you need to incorporate your vocation into your spiritual lifestyle not the other way around you don't you cannot bring the world into something and incorporate it into something that is not from here doesn't mix everything gets worked out in the cosmos in the in the in the spirit world first and then it manifests here in 3d it's not the other way around 3d doesn't 3d is subject to the universe not the other way universe is not subject to 3d Anybody, anybody don't know their purpose? I will do a reading for you. Yeah, and we can figure that out. Absolutely. Yes, Deirdre. You just asked a question and I just answered it. <laughs> <laughs> I would love help with that. Absolutely, I got you, I got you, I got you. Uh, uh, you know, I, I really, really believe that if we could expose the youth to numerology, astrology, and card sciences instead of world history, geography, and civics, Think the I think the world would get exponentially better one generation at a time. I did tell you guys that at the founding fathers, all of all the founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson wanted to have this stuff as regular curriculum, and yeah. They they shot it down. Can't have with 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 knowledge of self and knowledge of your life's work and your purpose with unlocking the spiritual code uh, in your name. Yeah, there's no uh, lies that uh, powers that be could be still telling everybody. And with all of that, I just said up above, there really wouldn't even been the advent of religion. You got a bunch of folks walking around like us we don't need a church. We don't need one guy standing up spewing and everybody else is, uh, uh, yes, Sharon, you have your hand up. Okay. So I just broke down the word heaven uh -huh. and hell. Uh -huh. They both come to ones. Yeah. And on the planes of expression that maps to mental. So is that just blatantly saying that heaven and hell are mental concepts. They're mental concepts that that have been forced fed to everyone, and and without self realization, you will fall into the trap and bucket of believing that those two places are actually real. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. That's deep that it's in the numbers like that. Oh. The numbers don't lie. <laughs> I'm telling you. The numbers do not lie. So we have we have a spiritual code, the expansive code. We have the your life's work and your life's purpose that's locked up and 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 embedded in your name. And then then another more most significant aspect of significance and the meanings of letters and numbers is on the interpersonal plane or the human relationship plane where your numbers can let you know you know what your marriageability is 
what your social, where your social ties are going to be, how you are, how romantic or lack thereof you are, your numbers have uh, your picture of health and all other forms of human frailty is in your numbers. It's in your name. It's in your name. The, the right practitioner, uh, someone who has, has, you know, great understanding of numerology and a great understanding of, of astrology, they could take your natal chart and your numerology chart and if they are dedicated, they can tell you everything that you're going to ever go through in your whole life. Health-wise, relationships, socially, uh, intellectually, all of that. All of it. They can tell you which opportunities are going to come when and where and how. Now, mind you, numerology, astrology, the cards, they are not leading your life. Numerology, the cards and astrology is just like what we used to use old school Thomas guide. I'll bring it up to the new school. It's just like GPS. With GPS, you can still choose to go another way, can't you? Siri be going nuts. They be like, oh, rerouting, 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 rerouting. Well, that's the same way with your natal chart and the numbers. You have your choice. And if you walk outside of what the path was, then your numbers and your chart will just reroute. But your numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. Your chart will tell you when you're getting ready to step off the cliff your astrological chart it will so there are there are there are just if you if if you just want to learn numerology just to do, run the names and stuff for yourself if that's all you want to do for that's fine if you just use it for the interpersonal or the human relationship part of it that's fine if you just use it for the business success and personal career part or finding your purpose or your life's work, that's fine too. If you just use it for the expansiveness, the self-awareness and the awakening, that's okay. If you don't use it for nothing else, use it to unlock the spiritual code. in your name so that you can start actively experiencing the mystical portion of your soul journey. Anybody got any, any questions, any comments? Yes, Deirdre. Uh, I'm sorry, I wanted- mm -hmm. You better stop apologizing, you're not- Okay. You, yeah, uh -uh. no sorries. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. So I, the four uh, phases that you, the four spiritual codes, or uh, I don't have them all. I have okay. physical, which is body. I have mental, which is mind, and emotional and intuitive. I do not have. Could you repeat those, please? Okay, physical. All fours and fives are assigned to the physical plane. So I have that. I wrote that on another paper. <laughs> mental. Do you have that one? Wait. Let me. So what I'm talking about is when you first started, you said physical and it equaled body. You said mental and it equaled mind. It was the mind. Emotional is the emotions and uh, spiritual represents the spirit and inner knowing. Okay. So intuitive is the spiritual part. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So as we, and, 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 and let's see, this is Tuesday, Thursday, we will start with number one. Um, 
I don't know if I'll be able to get through two numbers per show, but we'll see. But Thursday, we'll start with number one, and we're going to start with the spiritual code that is in number one, and then we'll go to the expansion. We'll go to the purpose, life work, and then we'll get to the human relation and the personal part of it. I want us to, to, um, to think about, you know, if we don't know our life's work, if we don't know our purpose, think about what, what it is that is calling from the inside of you. Not, not from outside stimuli, not from outside pressure, uh, either, either uh, not from in, inward pressure, self-imposed pressure, but just in the quiet of your soul. What is your soul telling you? And your soul could be telling you three or four or five things. Write them all down between now and Thursday. Write those down. Um, and then we will, we will break into uh, all of that on Thursday. And then we will start with the numbers. Um, and we'll start with number one. So we're going to go through, uh, uh, I'm going to say one through nine, but that's one through 99. We're going to go from one to 99. Um, uh, some numbers will be together uh, 13 and 31 67 you know all those will we'll cover those when we cover 13 um, but you guys will see you guys will see um, anybody got any any questions about what was covered today yeah hi hi Jolene <laughs> hi you just said two numbers that sparked me the 13 and the 67. So I was born in the 13, and you just mentioned 67. That's the year I was born. So what's up with that? <laughs> what is that? Well, uh, add six plus seven. I can't now, but yeah, I'm driving. Yes, you can. You're seven. driving. Uh -huh. You know what six plus seven is? It's 13. Six plus seven. Oh. It's 13. <laughs> Make the connection. Oh, okay. Oh, shoot. Oh, right. I didn't even think to add that. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, okay. I was I, never into numbers. I was never, I am not a numbers person. So I wouldn't even think to add. That want, look, Jolene. No, but I'm saying, saying, I'm just it. telling you who I am. I'm just telling you. I do not go, I do not talk numbers. I've never been in that conversation. You do uh, now. Wanting to even that. That's what I'm letting you know. But you do now. Now you're huh? a numbers person. Now you are a numbers person. Now you can oh, talk. Oh, now I'm a numbers <laughs> we, we I speak just graduated, positive. I guess, huh? Yeah, we speak positive <laughs> in, not the negative. We nobody. I'm not saying negative. I have, don't, please don't take that as negative. Okay. I just, that's, that normally I do not. Okay, so when you say numbers, seven, and you say I'm a number, I'm a shot, I'm a full number shot, and then I just found out I'm intuitive. And you say, we don't talk about soul conversations. That's where I live. That's the conversation of an internal journey. That's where I live. Absolutely. So that's where this is kind of new for me of adding these numbers understanding. So this is new. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And, and I'm so grateful for, for your participation. And I'm grateful that you are a numbers person. You are now. Oh, thank you. From, from this thank moment you. forward, you will be. And that's, okay. that's all I'm saying. That's all. Cool. What what we were before, what each of us was before this call started doesn't matter. Is what is what and who we are now, in this moment. And you are now a numbers person. Anybody else? How do you do it? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Deirdre. I'm sorry, I was trying to raise my hand. Forgive me. No, that's all right. Okay, so um, what I wanted to say was how this is so interesting um, because in times past, I wasn't one who did a lot of math, but what I have always done is counted numbers. I always counted numbers and added them together. Like if it was a, a 13, I would always add one and three and get to four. Yes. I've always done that, but I didn't know why I was doing it. And so now, 
like you said, add the address. I did that and yes. it added up to my number. Yes. So that's so interesting to me. So I'm just looking forward to learning more. And I also, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. I've had this book, because I'm really in, in a search, in a seat right now. So I've mm -hmm. read all these books. Um, but this one book that I, I got uh, like three months ago, I looked in it and then I put it up because the other ones kind of got my attention, but it's called um, uh, A Beginner's Numerology Guide. And it says decode relationships, maximize opportunities and discover your, your uh, destiny. Is this something that what you're talking about? Who's the author? Um, her name is Joy Woodward. Yeah, that that is a very very good uh, uh, place to to start. I would recommend if you want to become a serious uh, student of numerology, and if you cannot wait for a couple of months until my book comes out, purchase <laughs> shameful plug. Purchase numerology. The Romance in Your Name by Dr. Juno Jordan. I know y'all probably can't see this. Oh no, <laughs> you said numer, what is, ooh. Yeah, I will take a picture. It's called, the, it's titled Numerology, The wow, Romance, really doing The Romance in Your Name. And is the author is Juno Jordan, J U N O J O R D A N. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait and kind of look at this book because that wouldn't make sense. And then maybe your book will be out. <laughs> yeah, mine will be out. Uh, Just before I get to Juno. Yeah, mine will be out. Let's see, this is August. Mine will be out before Christmas. So I, I will have mine uh, pub out and published by. Uh, the holiday season. That's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Thank you for sharing that with us. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anybody else? I want to I wanna, uh, give a shout out to Deborah Franklin. She uh, uh, was invited uh, by Honeybee. She used to work with Honeybee in Atlanta. And we're grateful and thankful uh, for your presence, Ms. Franklin. If you uh, are led uh, would you like to have a few words today? Uh, no, I'm just really happy to be here. This is all new to me, and I've learned a lot so far. So I'm looking forward to many sessions. Absolutely. Well, I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm thankful that you're here. And, and if you have any questions or anything like that, you can always email me if you don't feel like saying it on the uh, on the show. You can email me with any of your questions and I will respond. Well, that's very sweet. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Anybody else? If not, this has been On the Sevens with Pipers B. Metatron, where we come to awaken, ascend, and expand. We go through our 88 steps into our mastered self and somewhere along this mystical soul's journey, your mastered self awaits you. I love and appreciate everyone that's here, and I will see you all on Thursday. Goodbye for now.